Yo, what up? This is Dart Adams here for Killer Boombox slash Any Hip Hop, and we are interviewing none other than Smith and Wesson, PNC Boys. Yeah. Uh, first, if you don't know who these people are, then you should really just punch yourself in the face real quick. Um, first thing you need to understand is that Gangstar set the aesthetic for the sound of East New York and Brooklyn. Rest in peace, but, Keith v. but but the next people in line that did that. Uh, this is part of the crew right here. Uh, along with the beat miners, um, you got to start with Black Moon, who laid down the foundation. But they took it to another level with their album, which is celebrating its 20th anniversary this year, The Shining. Yes. All right. Yes. yes so yes, I need yes. y'all to talk about the significance of your album, The Shining. First of all, I got to I gotta salute uh, Zulu Nation. You know what I'm saying? Big up to Africa, Bambada. You know what I mean? Um, cool Hurt. I mean, dudes like that. Um, like, we just students of the game. Mm -hmm. We came in the game as students, you know, doing our part. And um, we came directly, we came behind Black Moon. Yeah. Black Moon put out an album called Into the Stage. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in that in that time, you know, in the 90s, we was dealing, we was doing a lot, a lot, of, a lot of knowledge, a lot of wisdom, a lot of, you know. We dealing with the 120. Yeah. You know what I mean? Peace of the gods and earths out there. The lessons. You know what I mean? We dealing with the 120. We dealing with street lessons. We dealing with gang banging. Mm -hmm. We dealing with big up the Decepticons, my whole nation, my Decept nation out there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We dealing with everything. Best style, East New York, like trying to live yeah. out there, you know? So we get a little shot. Our shot is the shine man. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. So the shine is kicked off by a classic single, Bucktown, dropped at the end of 1994. Um, one thing we always talk about, especially me, is like winter music. Like the album drops and that shit signifies winter is coming. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like Jizz's, Jizz's album, that is a winter album. Now the song, Bucktown. Perpendicular to the square. <laughs> In particular. Yeah. But like that song, Bucktown, that that album, that song from that coming from from that upcoming album, what it did was it set the foundation. Rizzo salute. The, yeah, it set the foundation for the album that was coming. But it was a huge song that set y'all apart from everybody else. So could you talk about that song in particular and how? I mean, it, it didn't really set us apart because we was we was just we was out there like we was out there in the world like. We was out there in the wilderness, you know? Like, we yeah. was watching what was going on. Like, we was riding the trains. Um, we was watching what Black Moon was doing. Like, Black Moon was, like, like, like Buckshot. Buckshot and Juha did some phenomenal things. Like, yeah. uh, Evil D and Mr. Wall did some phenomenal things. Like, with Duck Down Management. With Duck Down Management and just with the whole, like, uh, just the whole movement. You know, like me and Tech was straight off the street, like literally, like we ain't no shit. We was like Flintstones, you know. So we we would we would have did anything, you know. We was just loyal to like to what the movement was. So Beat Miners was like, I right, come here, we do this. We was like, I right, cool, do this, you know. And you know, when, when Black Moon was working on the album, like we watched them go through stuff. Like we watched them be angry. And we was like, all right, we would go back and talk. We was like, all right, we don't want to do that. We want to do certain things. Mm -hmm. um, so it just, it, it, it groomed us in a certain form, you know. Yeah. It's, it groomed us in, in, not saying we knew how to do it better, yeah. but we just had a, 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 an insight where most rappers be thinking that they can control a business and things of that nature. But Yeah, so seeing what was happening with Duck Down in their situation with Nervous, that really gave you an idea of what to do and what to go for. Yeah, I mean, Drew Howe was an intern. Yeah. He was an intern at one label, and then he ended up interning. Drew Howe was interning at Nervous. Yeah. When we first met him, he was interning. Okay. So Buckshot, like, Buckshot is a hustler. Buckshot is from Crown Heights. He a hustler. He always think about money. Like, he, yeah. Crown Heights cast is always on it. Like, Brooklyn cast, whatever. So, you know, we just came through, and we did our part. Like, we, we, we wasn't thinking about taking over, you know. Mm -hmm. Nothing like that. No Lucius Lion shit like, you know. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> we just like, yo, we play our part, we do whatever, like what, what the team doing, like what the team doing. Like that's what Smith and Wesson, like this is what I, our whole thing, that's what our whole thing was, what the team doing. Like what, if, the, if the team is doing this, we'll be doing. Like we stand behind that. Yeah. And then like when you hear, like when you hear The Shining, you hear like a uh, session at the Dog Hilly. Mm -hmm. And then you start, you hear the team. Yes. You know, like we, we know the structure. We learn the structure and then we like, all right, we want to make sure you know that there's a whole lot of other stuff going on. Yeah. The reason why we're here is not because we here. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're here because of these guys and these individuals, yeah. things of that nature, you know? Yeah. So it's like we got a taste of uh, the Fab Five slash Great Eight slash the WWBCC through this particular project. So, um... Could you please speak on the importance of letting everybody know what was to come on your project? <laughs> nah, my voice is fucking dead. It's gone. I mean, what'd you say? Nah, the question was like, what was the importance of speaking? What was the importance of putting on everybody else, so letting everybody else know what was coming up next on your project, The Shining? Oh, the importance of that was each one teach one. Mm -hmm. Because that's the school we come. We we cut from a different cloth than was moving and grooving out here to yeah. in this day and age. You know what I mean? We came from. We literally came from crabs in a bucket, where if one make it out, they're gonna pull. They bound to pull you back. Mm -hmm. But we ain't believe in that mind theory, mm -hmm. because we come from. When I say good homes, I'm not meaning born with silver spoons or rich incomes. Yeah. I'm saying we come from good homes where lessons are being taught inside the house. Mm -hmm. Like my mom's was a, a minister. My pops used to play in a band for James Brown and all types of people. Yeah. His pops played music and his mom's was became my mom's throughout the years. So we came from a, a good background and upbringing. So when you're in the hood, it's like you got your team, and within that team, everybody has different relationships with different people. Like before me, there was <clears throat> before me it was other people that could have been his partner at any given moment. Yeah, I never even wanted the rhyme. I didn't want nothing to do with that shit. I was beating people up, engineer security for him, and just doing what I was doing for him because that's my brother. That's the love I have for him. I didn't want to rhyme about nothing. I just wanted to be an engineer behind the boards and do what that is. He actually wrote my first rap for me. Yeah. So that was the significance of if you make it out, you got to pull him along. It's like a chain. You got to pull. It's like, you ever seen that movie Pay It Forward? Yeah. That's what it is. You got to pay it forward. Mm -hmm. So when you make it out, you got to reach back and get your peoples, mm -hmm. your brother, your sister, whatever the case may be. And dealing it with hip hop and music, this is a billion dollar industry. Yeah. So this shit opened doors upon doors and windows and foot mats and everything. Yeah. So you have to <coughs> you have to be able, strong minded enough, strong skinned enough, and to to go back and bring the people that's there that you will and that you believe in. And that that's gonna be fucking with you from day one. Yeah, that seems to be a um, that seems to be like a theme because that's the same thing that happened with the Gangsta Foundation, putting on everybody from group home to. I mean, that's Brooklyn. Exactly, that's, what that's, we do. that's Brooklyn. East when New we York. fuck with each other, we unstoppable. Yeah. Spread love is the yeah, Brooklyn man, way. You know, big <laughs> everything. That's what we do, man. Mm -hmm. All right, so one thing I really need to talk about. Of course, I've seen y'all at the Middle East. I've seen y'all church tear it down time after time after time. And y'all have 20 years of classics and solid music and timeless music to draw from when you perform. Could you please explain to those coming up that try to fake it and try to sh do the shortcuts that that shit won't make it, that you have to put in the work and you have to actually make timeless music and put your heart into it as opposed to try to just do some bullshit? Um, basically, there is no shortcuts, man. I don't have the answers to that, basically, yeah. to tell you the truth, because... It's like the game and a, and a hustle. The gym game. I, not to keep comparing it back to that, but that's where we come from. Yeah. It's like the workout game. It's the hustle game. 
the hustle know what you going the hustle knows what you put in. Yeah. Automatically. Mm-hmm. Fuck what the people think of what they see. What you put into the game, what you sacrifice for the hustle, it knows. And it's gonna pay you accordingly. Mm-hmm. It's gonna grant you what you put in for it. Yeah. You bust your balls, so to speak, blood, sweat and tears, it's coming right back to you. You know yeah. what I mean? You can't fake it. Yeah, you you, you can't fake it. I mean, like they say, you fake it till you make it. Mm-hmm. But once what you do, you, you, you feel me? What you do <laughs> is what you're going to get back up out of it. Man. Yeah. it when you plant them seeds, your garden is going to sow what you plant. Man. And you're you going to be there. However, you turn that soil over to replant mm-hmm. and invest in yourself again. Mm-hmm. That's the best way to go about it. All right. All right, for anybody who hasn't done it, Brian Coleman from Boston made a book. He made a book. Check the technique. Check the technique, volume two. Volume and one, in there, and in volume two, he specifically breaks down the album The Shining. So if you don't have that, you need to buy that. And you need to read the story. It's an oral history and, telling. And, and what did he say you, about you, me? I was, I, was, <laughs> I, I was a quiet, fucked up one. Right? And, and you get, See? When, you buy, when you buy the volume two, you get a, of 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 forty five, yes. you get a wax exclusive wax of Smith and Wesson, home sweet, sweet home. home. Like, where do you do that at? <laughs> <laughs> salute to everybody and get on down. Yeah, salute to the homie Brian Coleman, man, for doing his research and just 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 just, just caring. You know what I mean? Just just yeah. giving the, just giving a damn about hip hop. For sure. Yeah, like the culture of it, like yeah. document, documenting, it, like 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 what you guys doing right now, like documenting, the, you know, this is the history, like we, we this is the timeline of what's going on. Like if it, if we don't document it, it, it's like it never existed. And that absolutely, happened. absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. So Boston is mad love for y'all. Boot camp click the yeah, WWBCC, yeah. the Grade Eight, the Fab Five, I all y'all. B-town. Somebody was like, yo, we not B-Town no more. What y'all call it? What y'all, what y'all, what y'all, it's what y'all, still B-Town. It's still a B? It's still it's a B. B. It's still a B. It's still a B. Straight. It's still a B. It's still a B. Because you know what I mean. Boston, we go hard. I already know. I already know. But. Yeah. As yeah. You, as you, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I just want to say thanks for the music. Thanks for your contribution to the culture. Word. Uh, we appreciate everything y'all do over here. So word, word, just that's word. love. Thank you, man. Word Sorry. up. Thank you. Yeah. Smith and Wesson, 20 years and going, man. Yes, still indeed. Still shining, still climbing, so still salute. grinding. One. Yo, Smith yeah. and Wesson upon the borderline. Wow, go ahead. Test the sound in your dead same time. <laughs> Yo, you already know. You listen to any, any. Any, 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 any hip hop, right? Any, here. any, 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 any. Let's go. Gotta let that shit out. If you don't let that shit out. You might fuck around and hurt somebody.